Hi guys, welcome to web scraping and mapping dam levels in Python. In this course, we're going to be covering a couple of topics ranging from mapping, web scraping, data visualization, ETL, and databases. So let's take a deeper dive into each and every one of these topics that we're going to be covering in this course. So the first one is mapping. So as a mapping library, we're going to be using something called leaflet.js. So leaflet.js is a JavaScript library that is used for building interactive maps. The second topic that, second topic that we'll be hitting is called web scraping. So web scraping is a form of data mining, which involves extracting data from a website. Another word for it is called web harvesting. The third topic that we'll be looking at is data visualization. Data visualization is the process of visualizing data by displaying it in graphs. So as a visualization library, we're going to be using chart.js. So chart.js is a JavaScript library as well, used for building interactive graphs. The next topic that we'll be tackling is ETL. So ETL stands for extract transform and load so etl is the process of extracting data from a variety of sources cleaning and transforming that data and lastly loading that data into a target table or a flat file the last topic that we'll be hitting is databases so as a database we're going to be using postgresql with postgis extensions so PostgreSQL is where our data will reside in the long term. Okay, so let's take a look at the application. So this is a web GIS application. Okay, so what this does is it maps the six main dams that we depend on in Cape Town as a source for our residential water. Okay, so these dams supply our water for basically all suburbs in this region. Okay, so firstly, I want you to notice the size of the circle markers. So if I click on one, a pop-up will show up displaying the name of the dam. So this dam is called the Berg River. So this is the Berg River Dam. This dam, for instance, is the Water Squirt Dam. So as you can see, it's plotted in the form of a bubble chart. And as you know, a bubble chart works in this manner, that each bubble right, varies in size. So if the size of the, of the bubble is smaller compared to the rest of the bubbles, it means that the value of that bubble is less and if the bubble seems to be larger than most of the other bubbles then the value of that bubble is larger so each and every dam is value is in percentages so we are going to be displaying the volume of water that is stored currently in that dam so this data resides in the Western Cape government's website. So they publish this data on a weekly basis, if you're lucky. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, it gets a bit de delayed, and you might end up getting it um, two weeks later, but it's reasonably current. So we're not using historical data that um, we downloaded that got recorded a couple of years ago. This is actual current data that we use um, in order to see how much water we currently have in our dams, okay? So, if we take a look at our KPI here, so what this does is that it displays the mean, right? The average water stored in this entire region, right? So what it does is that it takes each um, percentage value of water available in the six main dams of Cape Town and then it works out the mean, right? Meaning, meaning the average 
of water that we have available in the region so right now we are in the green we have 64 percent of water in the region right which is okay right and as you can see next to the value we have a green arrow pointing up so this is a kpi that indicates that um we are not in danger of a drought okay so we still have a reasonable amount of water um in our dams overall in this region specifically so once we hit a value of 50 percent and lower actually lower than 50 percent 49 percent and lower the arrow will point downwards and it will turn red so this logic is built into this application okay so another thing that we can do is or you can do if you expand on this this application is you can add a notification for yourself for when the average water that we have left in the region is under 50% then perhaps you could send yourself an email notification or an SMS notification telling us or warning us that we are in the danger zone and we are running out of water in our dams. Okay, so let's take a look at the data. Okay, so as you can see, each dam is color coded. Okay. So each color is unique for that specific dam. And if we look at our donut chart, we can see each slice has a different color, which correspond to the color of the circle marker, right? Which corresponds to the dam. So we can see the Berg River Dam is in a dark blue color. And in the donut, we can see the Berg River Dam is also in a dark blue color and the value of the of the percentage of water that is left in the dam currently is 78 right so we can see the percentage data value as we hover over the slice that corresponds to that uh, dam so in the donut chart we're visualizing the dam levels for this week so this is the amount of water that we have stored currently this week okay and below you will see what you call a multi-bar bar chart so multi-bar bar charts are used for comparison okay so here we'll be comparing we'll be comparing this week's values versus last week's value versus last year's value okay so let's take a look at um let's compare this week and last year so as we can see we are looking pretty good in terms of um, the amount of water that is stored in our dams so which is true because we have been receiving a fair amount of rainfall which then filled up our dams whereas before as you can see last year we were busy recovering from a drought scare okay which is okay considering how it used to be we were literally running dry okay and it is evident in the feed the water slip dam as you can see last year the last recorded percentage value of water was 11 percent so it was quite scary we could see when we actually looked at the images of the dam there were fish laying dead and dry because there was hardly any water for them to live in okay and if we just look at last year we can see that it's it's quite scary right but also we were busy recovering from that drought scare so you can see more and more rainfall occurred and the dam started filling up okay and if we look at 
this week versus last week, we can see that we kind of are um, using up more water, right? Or we didn't receive as much rainfall, right? But we're still in a decent um, range compared to last year, okay? So I would say we are looking pretty good. Yeah, and on the water squirt dam, which was at 11% last year, is now at 44%, which is pretty good. And you can see um, the size of the bubble or the circle marker shows you that the water squirt dam, dam has the least amount of uh, water stored. This could either be that the dam is smaller than the Berg River Dam, for instance, or it could be that the people or the the people residing near the dam who are using the dam, the the dam's water, are very disciplined in the manner in which they they use and save water. So that could also be a, an indication of why the Berg River is um, has more water stored compared to the water squirt dam. So there's a couple of reasons that you yourself could uh, try and analyze and figure out. And um, yeah, so the back end of this application is obviously um, Python. And the web framework that we'll be using is Django. So I hope you guys will enjoy this course as much as I enjoy taking it for myself. While I was building this application, I have learned a lot. And I've also learned how to combine the latest technologies. This, is, this application is utilizing the latest technologies. So you don't have to worry about outdated tools that you'll be using. So whatever you learn from this, you will be able to apply right now. In fact, you might even be ahead of some of the members of your team, right? And you can also take the source code and build on that or use it for applications that you'll be building for yourself. So I hope you guys will really enjoy this course. I really enjoyed it. And um, I mean, web scraping is a crucial um, manner of obtaining data where it's almost impossible to obtain it any other way and it's a very smart way right and it can be automated like for instance we collect data once a week right so all we need to do is just keep the application running and then on the day that the Western Cape government is supposed to be publishing um, the dam data, it will be automatically fetched by the web crawler and displayed. And the mean, the average water available in the region will automatically be calculated autonomously. And you'll be learning how to do all of that in this course, right? So I'll be just showing you guys a bit um of how this tile displays these dams i'll also be showing you how to um, use this web map service to obtain this tile and use it as a base map in your application okay so this is the upper and lower, I think Steen, Steenbrus Dam upper, Steenbrus Dam lower. And as part of the ETL, I'll be showing you how to join uh, Pandas data frames in order to get the GPS coordinates, right? So all of that you'll be, you'll be learning in this course.
So thank you for your time. Thanks for watching this. And I hope you guys will have a blast, right? And I hope you'll be able to complete this without making too much mistakes. And if you need help, you have my email available. I do answer all queries as best as my knowledge. I also have the source code if you want to just uh, instead of following along, just copying and pasting the um, boring stuff, like the, the tedious stuff, like the front end and the styling, etc. And also, um, make sure you have a decent internet connection um, in order to, to kind of stream this web map service that will allow us to display the base map. So as you can see, my internet connection is not that great at the moment, so it's kind of laggy. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, guys. Enjoy.